Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Our uh, president announced that the there was going to be a new branch of the military, or I should say a department under the Air Force. They're going to call it the Space Force. Uh, why in the world would we do a Space Force? Now, if you are familiar with Project Blue Beam, where they're using holograms, and they can create pretty much any kind of image that they wish, uh, there is a one where they're in a, uh, it looks like a school gymnasium. And then it has what looks like a whale come right out of the floor, jump into the sky, and then crash, and then water waves go everywhere. Of course, it's a hologram, but I'm telling you, it looks pretty darn real to me. And, you know, they always show you stuff that's like from 20 years ago, technology-wise. So... Could they fake an alien invasion, which some people think? Possibly. Could they fake a the Antichrist coming in the clouds with glory to fool people into worshiping the beast? Possibly. Maybe they've got something up their sleeve, so to speak, that I don't even haven't even fathomed. I don't know. But what is the purpose of this space force? Well, personally, I believe the real purpose of the space force is to oppose Christ when he, when he finally does return to this earth. And that's just my opinion. I don't know. So let's take a look. Now, the book of Revelation is not in chronological order. Absolutely not. I mean, it skips around. So we're going to take a look at Revelation chapter 16. Oh, uh, let's see. Where am I going to start? I guess we'll start at verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Okay. So this is during the tribulation period when God is pouring out the vials and the uh, plagues upon the earth. Verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, kings of the east, what do all you think of? I think of China. Do you know that China could field an army of 200 million easily? I mean, moving them would might not be easy, but they could field an army that large. They have a population of 1.5 billion, which is 1,500 million, being that over 50% of their population is male, because when they only allowed to have one child, and when they find out it's a female, they abort it. So their population is over 50% male. So you got to figure they've got at least 800 million males to choose from. So, you know, if you took 25% of the population... You know, everybody under a certain age, let's say 18, 17, 16, and then everybody above, oh, I don't know, 35. I mean, you got to have 25% of the population between, let's say, 16 and 35, you know, military age. 
uh, they could field an army of 200 million. Easy. Now, moving them wouldn't be so easy, but, you know. The kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, which is Satan, Revelation 12, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For these are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Yeah, they're going to oppose Christ when he returns with his armies in heaven, right? Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his, keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now, people, if the, if the Bible, uh, the New Testament was written in Hebrew, that phrase would not be there. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. But it tells them that because it was written in Greek. So it tells you what the word means in the Hebrew. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Remember, Christ on the cross said, when he gave up the ghost, it says, It is finished. Well, now it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, and so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Ooh. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. That's about 70 pounds, about 32 kilos. And that falls on your head, you're going to have one heck of a headache. You're going to need a whole bottle of bare aspirin. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, and the plague thereof was exceeding great. All right, let's skip to chapter 19, Revelation. We just read Revelation 16. Let's take a look at 19. Let's go to Revelation 19 and verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So this is Christ. And the armies, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he crieth with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls, the birds, all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. See, the, fowl, the, the birds are going to have a feast. You know, the vultures, they're going to have a, a feast. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies. Ah, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against 
his army. Remember there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Well, now there's going to be God's armies, Christ's army against the armies of the devil, the dragon, and his earthly minions on this earth. There was war in heaven. Well, now there's going to be a war on earth. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Wow. So there's not, it's going to be a very short battle, I'm pretty sure. I'm not certain, but you know, hey, short battle, you know. And you know what kills me? These people, these idiots that worship the devil actually think they're going to win this war. And after all, you know, Satan's convinced them and said, well, you know, uh, don't believe God's all-powerful because if he was, well, why am I still around? See, they don't understand God's purpose. God allows Satan to exist to try and tempt people to see. God wants to know, wants you to know, are you going to follow Christ or are you going to follow the devil? And all these pre-tribbers that think that they're going to, not going to be here for the mark of the beast and the tribulation, they're going to have to make a choice. They're either, their choice will likely be die for the faith or deny Christ. And if you deny Christ, he'll deny you before the Father and his angels. He's promised that. If you deny Christ to save your sinful flesh in this life, he will deny you before the Father and his angels. But if you die for the faith, you're promised a, a better resurrection. A better resurrection. Now, where is this found? In the, it's found in the Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 35. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Do you know there's a resurrection, and then there's a better resurrection? Now, all I know is, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and this is why they, the Judaizers, hate Paul and try to make it so that you don't believe that he's an apostle. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So, what he's saying here is that if you're alive when the Lord comes, you're not going to stop those that are asleep, that are dead in Christ. Okay? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So much for a secret rapture, right? People always shout before they want to do something secret, right? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. People, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. If we're not, me if, if, if a Messiah comes from the sky 
and we're not caught up to meet him in the air, in the clouds, it's the wrong Messiah. It's the beast, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. It's not Jesus. And besides, Matthew 24 tells you the false Christ comes first. Pre-tribbers have got it totally backwards. They're wrong. Why? Because they bless those that hate the Lord Jesus. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I mean, why do you bless the enemies of Christ, those that curse him and hate him? All I know is the Space Force is probably being designed and built and implemented so that it can try, try, and fail to stop Christ before he reaches the earth, to try to defeat the armies of heaven. And if we're not caught up in the clouds, in the sky, it's the wrong Messiah. Don't be fooled. Very important. Now, in Matthew 16, 25, Jesus said, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake, for my sake, shall find it. John 12, 25, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Mark 8, 35, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Uh, you ever wonder why I'm trying to reach as many people as I can? People, I got a huge red bullseye on my back. I mean, I am on so many lists. When I first came to the Lord uh, in the late 89 and early 90s, my phone was tapped. Uh, my mail was getting opened. I mean, they, they know who I am. They know who I am. I'm on so many of their lists. But uh, am I really that worried about it? Yeah, not really. The Lord has to allow whatever happens to any of us has to be allowed of the Lord. Read Job chapter 1. Satan had to cast a, uh, a bet to the Lord. And the Lord accepted that bet. And said, well, you could do whatever you want to him, but you can't touch his life. You can't kill him. Anything else you want to do is fine, but you can't kill him. And uh, God took that bet, and Job was uh, faithful unto the end. He wasn't perfect, but he was, he was faithful to the end. And uh, I pray the Lord gives me strength to do the same. But people, that's why I tell you, I, I try to warn about the important stuff. How many people are going to take the mark of the beast thinking they're not going to be here for the mark? The churches will, the churches will tell them to take it because you can't pay your tithe otherwise. And besides, are you going to let your children starve? Oh, if you don't take the mark, your children are going to starve. You can't buy or sell. But isn't that a denial of having faith that God could feed your children even if you can't buy food? I think so. I think it's a denial. I really do. I mean, let's face it. When the children of Israel were in the desert after the Passover, after the, during Exodus, God fed them with manna and he gave them water to drink out of the rock. Couldn't he do it again? But Lord, I had to take the mark to save my children's lives. I couldn't buy them food. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Probably the scariest words you'll ever hear in your entire existence. And I'm probably paraphrasing that, but uh, you get the idea. So, 
if we're not caught up to meet the Lord in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. So, what can I tell you? The Space Force. Yeah. You notice it looks exactly like the uh, Star Trek emblem. I don't know how many of you people are Trekkies, but uh, I grew up with that stuff in the er uh, mid-60s. Yeah, they've been pushing this garbage for a long, long time. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. One day he'll return in glory with his armies. May he give me a flaming sword. I'll know what to do with it. Preferably, he sends me to uh, San Francisco. I'll know exactly what to do with that flaming sword. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.